fluctuates. So less than 17 artists who are always working in the collective, helping each other. One of the best things, what I've learned curating this Benale is the community, the art, artist community here who has come forward to support each other. Like, this Benale was not hung by the Benale team. It was hung by the artists. We just gave them, okay, this is your spot, this is your spot. We had some issues with those spots which were also sorted out. So, uh, and if they've, they've done their work, they've gone ahead and helped other people. And the catalog is here, I mean, I've written a small note, I'm not a writer, but it says the Benale is of the people and for the people. And I think that's the best way I could sum it up is, you know, I spent 20 days here and four months on paper, and I have made the best relations I could for which will last me a lifetime because we were all on the same page. There was not a curator, artist authority, or vice versa. It was, we were on the same platform. The Pushpe uh, imagery, as you see, is the barbed wire. And we all know that Sri Lanka is coming out of 30 years of war. And for him, the act of uh, terrorism or being confinement was a very, very strong uh, visual presence. So he took the form of screen prints, canvases, which you see here. But this time, uh, we actually got into a discussion where I said, let's push your boundary. Because he's been doing this for three or four years. And I said, what's the next step for you? So uh, we decided to do something in 3D, which is, I'll say there. So once I stop talking, you know, one of you, you can go one by one and see it, or couples or whatever. And uh, the argument was, this right now is the bathroom. So art, traditionally, in not only Sri Lanka, it's in India as well. Every, any artist would feel offended if I put the art outside the bathroom here. And it was the same with Pushpe. He, he didn't show it to me, but he was very upset, and I could see it on his face, which led to another round of dialogues. In the end, I think he realized that I gave him the best space uh, in the entire gallery or all the three floors. It is the best space. So, uh, feel free. Uh, and you see what he's done. He's also mixed up the barbed wire with fairy lights. So using terrorism with festivities. So how to look at the two aspects of coin, which is act of terrorism and act of festivities together. So feel free, and you feel free to walk through it if you want. There's no one stopping it. It's right there. And the way this gallery has been created, and sorry that my air conditioning is a big side, uh, the ground floor talks about its more broader sense of subjects, which are uh, sub which concern archaeology, which concern uh, political mappings, which is done by Bala of Pitya. Uh, Bala also talks about the whole colonial academic background, which we all stem from in, in the subcontinent. There is Pietro Rufo who talks about relationships, political relationship between America and South, uh, North America and South America. And uh, Mahen Pereira, who's also been a captain of curiosity, is really true memory. Mahen is also here, he is speaking about his work. Like, like my expression, like, like my experience with Pushpe, this was one artist who we really had uh, communication issues because he didn't speak much in English. I didn't speak Sinhalese at all. But what he did was surpass you know, both my expectation and his. And I'm, I'm sure he's going to change his practice. So my, I think my role as a creator was just a dialogue. It was just a dialogue between artists who style uh, through my visits here. And you see that inside. So that's the introduction of the gallery. Uh, first of all, I'll talk about that when we get there. And behind you is an art book by Lakisha, which is a portable postcard shop. Last time it was at Lakshmana uh, Brother Institute. So the whole idea is how you can share your own history and share it with your friends and family all over the world. This is a broader historical narrative which you made. I'm going to first introduce the work to you standing here so you know what's where. The crown is made by the movie, the Singe. There are two crowns, one on the outside and one on the inside. Uh, of course, it's very simple to present the colonial past that we all come from. So, this one, of course, it talks more about the civil war and, and, the, and, the, and the army, while the one outside is, it talks about how delicate our history is. It was made of safety pins and you need to hold it together, but she still made the imperial crown out of it. Um, on this side, the right hand side of uh, where my hand is, is Pala Bhattu. It here as well. Sorry, I still can't get your surname right. Uh, Pala is right here. He will be talking about his work, so you can ask him all the questions. But he's talked about the male dominance in colonial uh, historical uh, history of Sri Lanka, which can be seen by this gentleman, tall gentleman wearing a, in a robe, holding a degree in his hand. So, uh, and behind his works are more of Pala's 
the usual style of working is with maps uh, and the whole political boundaries. Uh, what else, Pala? I mean, you, you can add or add to it. Don't be shy. Uh, just to let you know that the work right there is talking about Jaffna. And in 2010, a work similar to that from the CNC is going to the Sovereign Art Prize, uh, which is pretty respectable for any artist today. So, Pala, do you want to talk two minutes? It can be translated. You sure? If you have any questions, Paula is here and we can answer that later. <laughs> Mahen Pereira's cabinet of curiosity is in the center. Mahen is here. So Mahen, since, yeah. since you're here, you might as well talk about it. I can take a break. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, I have, uh, this is my cabinet of curiosities. I have about maybe approximately 50 objects that are all from culture. And I walk around because otherwise it's and uh, my intention of making the object was to uh, kind of trace my own implicit memory and how I kind of uh, restore and uh, to kind of uh, re-represent uh, in different forms and uh, they are all done out of my own clothes rather than pigmented. Uh, yeah, and I would like you all to ask me questions because I think it's better that way. What do they represent? They don't actually represent anything. For me, the making process of art is just merely doing something, you know. I mean, in a sense, art is just merely doing something. And uh, how I mold shapes according to a very intuitive uh, need or desire, you know. But you also said that it is connected with your memory. Yeah, it is connected with my memory, but it's not, it's an implicit memory that comes in from inside, you know, not uh, rationally thinking of it and creating an object. Yeah. <coughs> Where did it happen? That's what uh, was sent by my brother, he's an antique dealer, so I got the right thing for the right. <laughs>
and it's also getting a lot of uh, like, a, like a facelift. So there's a lot of construction happening. The roads are being dug up. The roads are being re redone. Uh, and so uh, Pradeep went around shooting himself at these locations, uh, also superimposing himself, which will make uh, to talks about uh, recent archaeology kind of uh, kind of interpretation as well. So yeah, that's that's Pradeep. He's not here. And just to let you know, this thing can be solved for the first time for as it was stored. He's Sri Lanka's top performing artist. He's been there for a long, long time. He's part of the Tirtha Collective as well. So when he came up with an idea that he wants to do this, he wants to do that, then Bangladesh maybe change the way we work. And what if we do something on the streets and you document them into photographs as well as perform in the galleries? Uh, I really could make out if he loved me for it or hated me for it because his expression never changed during our talk. But I was very, very surprised to see that he actually went to Sri Lanka. It was very, very difficult because uh, he was afraid of being put into jail. Because he started undressing himself uh, in front of the important monuments of Sri Lanka and started ironing his clothes. The reason he's ironing is because he's trying to clean the historical. Uh, you know, you always get this sanitized version of history. So he never wear a crumpled shirt. You always clean it up and iron it so that it looks crisp and nice. So that's his comment on. on, on uh, clearing a sanitizing industry. So this is where the nation was done discreetly, so there were two people running around. It was set up in five minutes, shot in five minutes for the next location. So my advice to him was to start safe, so that in case he goes to prison, I still get two works for the show. Luckily <laughs> <laughs> that never happened, but he's still here. Uh, behind you is Mehbubu Rehman from, from Bangladesh. Yeah, Chensekar, get out So, um, Mehboob uh, and I have been discussing for a long time what he's going to do. And it took, uh, he came up with the whole idea of shared colonial histories. Uh, because again, Bangladesh, Pakistan, India, and Sri Lanka have the same background. And uh, there are two crowns here. And this was related to the, the coronation of uh, King George V and Queen in 1993. Can I take a picture of the coronation? Come on, you're the artist for you. Uh, 1930 was, I think, yeah, last year was 100 years ago. So, 1930, Delhi was made the capital of the British, uh, that was 11, 11, sorry, yeah. So, the, the coronation was supposed to take part in a place called Coronation Park in the north of Delhi. And there were two crowns which were used for coronation. One which was made in India with all the rubies and jewelry and this and that. And the reason that the crown was never used because the British thought it's going to lead to a, uh, it's, it's a Christian ceremony in a Hindu state. And they never used the crown and the King Charles had to wear the crown to London and come to India. So he actually never wore the crown to name for him in India. And he had to, you know, so he never was crowned in a way as the king of, uh, as, a, as the governing king of India. But this is his commentary on that. Uh, as my rules, yeah. Don't ask me what the ladies are doing, I'm just sure they're just hanging around. Yeah. Alright, let's move to the first part and we speed up a bit. Oh, six weeks or more in Sri Lanka, and I'm afraid our work is very specific to the country and our no response to the country. And on this particular occasion, with the opportunity of the Biennale, we invited artists to, to create work during the residency for around the theme of, of many history. And the artist to my right, Mr. Um, and I'm going to invite her to say a little bit about this piece, which was a performance piece, and both of um, other outlets. Okay, so it's myself and Norman Corbin, and we wanted to create a piece that was about the context of the theme and also to a, a specific site and we chose the administration department next door and made a piece that responded to that context. So the piece was a, um, an intimate performance. We came in last night and took one person at a time out and they had an experience an event, they were witness to an event and we wanted to um, explore different people's responses to the, the same situation but also looking at the recording of events, bureaucracy and um, 
how, how those records get either taken in or discarded into the context of um, the fact historical records. So the piece here is just basically a remnant of the performance of the event that happened last night. So some of it is some old photographs which people were shown last night as part of the event and they're open to interpretation. You find your own narrative, was the person showing you them the, the witness to an event, were you the witness to the event, it's, it's all open to interpretation and these are some of the responses we have from people. So really the only record of it is people's responses and everybody will interpret what they saw last night differently. Eventually, the witness statements will end up in the bags that the food is distributed in the, on the street. So they'll go out to street vendors and will end up discarded. Yeah. That was great. Joey, of course, didn't mention she was dressed up as uh, all of that. But your costume was fantastic. You had this office work, right? office work with a tie and a nice dress and everything. It was quite a nice... Uh, uh, it's a kind of exploration of bureaucracy, really, yeah. and you know how male, female, bureaucracy, like spaceless in a way. You kind of you're not one section, not the other. You are just a, a kind of um, a kind of puppet state in a way. You're part of the kind of bureaucracy, so we kind of worked with that and the administration building as well. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it was a fantastic location. It's right behind, so when you walk out, uh, it's the admin offices of the entire institute. Very, very nice. I mean, I think you love the place more than anything else. Great. Thanks. Thanks, sir. You were working with the Marks for a wide range of factors. And Jeremy Robbins worked with downstairs, and then, then I don't know what his work says, space. It combines performance, it combines installation. They work with a very wide range of materials. Um, I've heard he is an artist that we've worked with for some years, whose work goes across the way from the sound based work, and it was a sculpture work. And this is a particular piece made.
around the way to the boots around. And Tom, yes, I'm going to do a lovely performance last night where he was just tracking the way it seemed to kind of walk. As he was walking around, it seemed to kind of follow him. Uh, and I really like that big kind of thing. So again, that's it, that's this. And if you go to Institute, it's an installation here. Come and check it out, it's running all day till 7, every kind of week. Uh, and that's sculptural, but also working with voices. For me, this works in the space, and what's going on here. Yeah, what's very interesting, what Bob pointed out, that when we started selecting the works, a very common uh, uh, motive which came out are uh, stories of women. And even though we were trying to evade war, eventually I couldn't. Because what you see here is a narrative domination by women and the story of loss and memory. And that's all related to war. So I'm going to tell you what's where, and then you can spend some time going through all the works and come back and spend more time. Especially for this one, the fantastic story that Radhika is here. Uh, Radhika and Sharika are the artists who made this. Uh, I'm sure you let me talk about that because it's one of my favorite works which I've seen uh, this year. So on, your, on the back, on the right side, is a video uh, documentary by Sachini and uh, Natalie. And, uh, talks about 30 years of stories, women's own stories and interpretations in 30 years of war. Some of them were born there, some of them were uh, war, 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 war that. So it's pretty long, so spend some time looking to some, uh, some of these stories of loss and changes in society. Uh, Anuri Ferreira is here in the cabinet of memories. So now she opened up her personal cabinet to share her own uh, stories from the past, her secrets, her nostalgia. So, uh, Noli is from Sri Lanka, she's made in India now. Then I know in that corner is a very quiet corner, it's a book by Nick Fernando. It's a book that she's made on her father's past. And she's reenacted, so she's got two young, a young boy and a young girl, who reenacted the childhood uh, friendship of her father, which comes from a place called Trikamuli in northeast of Sri Lanka. Uh, just please wear gloves while finding it, it's a very delicate book. Behind me is uh, her stories. Uh, it's a much, much larger project. Stories of women who have lost uh, uh, some uh, part of their life in the war, which is supposed to be a husband, father, son. And I think I'm going to let Radhika talk about it, but please spend time going through the stories of women which has been translated into the brain.
is just 10 stories that we picked, um, five Tamil language speaking and five Sinhala language speaking. So some from the South, some is some um, North, uh, representing Muslim Sikhs and Tamils. And the idea here is that when you look at it, everyone's lost something, everyone's lost part of themselves. But all of these women are also extremely hard to strongly relies on ordering people because I don't think I would be able to do had I gone to what they did, but then they would tell the story and they would always courage. And they also had a kind of hope that I can't fathom because they believe that something good will happen in the future. They believe that, you know, we need to make this country something that's better for their children. So that kind of hope and belief is something that I find amazing in our world and they feel um, And I think that's what resonates with me across the world.
started a new journey. And that when we meet him, how there's so much tension and misunderstandings and complications, and trying to find a common identity and family um, that are now so dispersed and also have very different cultural identities. So, for example, my uncle in New York is taking on quite a lot of American identity. And also, my uncle in Paris lives in one of the suburbs of Paris, hasn't been very well integrated into France and therefore it's, it's taken a very tiny um, And so I was kind of interested in, in these tensions between people and what it means to belong to a family in, in a globalised global society. I think we yeah, lots of reasons for that. Um, so again, my father left me to Lanka and the Fort Singapore, whereas my two uncles didn't. And again, again, I think that they had a very different view of their own history and their own homeland and Japan. And that's also making their identities into what they are now in their new environments. Um, so I kind of started to the concentrate on the small gestures and kind of the small movements that we do that we don't think so much about uh, when we're with people who we know very well. Um, but for me and for me and my cousins, for example, we should be very close to related. We don't share the same language, we don't share the same culture and we don't even share the same body language. And so uh, I became very interested in looking at how do we can now start communicating, belonging to each other as a family when we have this white right <laughs>
been 30 years or more, it can be four and four ways very easily. So if you look at this, these are the only two works which talk about God pretty much directly in the, in the entire exhibition. The rest are going to be indirect to the stories of the film. Uh, or two works of Jesper, who's right there, who's made this photograph, which is a uh, ministry of memory, right? So Jesper's going to give you an introduction on that work. Then I would suggest that all of you should just go through Charlie's uh, photographs of uh, the Muslim story from the wall, and then you will regroup and the, the photograph of the characters of the The work that, that which is about the situation is we have the, this work I made here in Sri Lanka. Uh, in general, I'm interested in the art representation, knowledge production, history making, and uh, I'm interested in groups and people who are counter hegemonic narratives, narratives or histories that is in kind of opposition or alternative to the uh, governing order. So, anyway, so this monument. Uh, I'm part of an anonymous group, so now I tell you a secret. I'm, usually I don't tell that I'm part of this group, so this is not telling that one. But anyway, so in 2001, uh, there was demonstrations in Gothenburg, Sweden, against uh, uh, during this uh, European Union summit, and President, uh, the American President Bush, uh, uh, the younger. Uh, was in Sweden and it was huge protest, maybe 50, 100,000 people were demonstrating from different organizations as well. And uh, the police started to uh, approach the demonstrations very harshly and uh, so it became harder and harder confrontations and finally at one point uh, the police started to shoot at the demonstrators so several people got uh, shot and very seriously wounded. And in the end uh, uh, the social democrats that were in power, uh, and this is also kind of then I, I, I lived in Sri Lanka between 82 and 84, so now I go over to this other world because my parents work uh, in the Kotkwale project, which is a hydropower plant project uh, in Kotkwale close to Kandy. And uh, then in 2004, I came back to Sri Lanka, I was invited to Tirsa by Amuhole and Yaga. Uh, and then I did a work around the, this Kotkwale project, which was very controversial and problematic in many ways. And this led me to, I was also interested in the relationship between Sweden and Sri Lanka. And the uh, Swedish imperialism or colonialism in different ways. And this led over to the free trade zones that were part of the restructured policies that World Bank and IMF were doing in in the late 70s in Sri Lanka, not of South East Asia. So anyway, so then I worked together for many years together with the media center and the union, uh, some people from the free trade zone workers union in Sri Lanka. And so this is a continuation of this work, which is an interview with Neymar Capranato, who is an attorney at law and a uh, uh, feminist activist. And she's well, quite well known, as I understand. And uh, so she's, uh, and English is also black and out to refer to this. This is not the official story. So this is kind of a story that challenges the, 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 the power, the dominating order. So she's telling about the situation, or she's telling about the politics and situation in Sri Lanka since the uh, late 70s until today, and especially about uh, what happened now during the post or conflict in the country. Yeah. Is it? So if you have any questions, and, uh, yeah, and I also one important thing which is connected to this uh, memorial, I think uh, uh, so I think this very much as making histories, and I think uh, so the, his the history, as much as it's telling about the past, it's producing the future, because the history is made in the present, it's not made in the past, the future is always made in the present, so you can decide the future by making history. So.
has a dual meaning in its works. Uh, it, it, it just said it purifies an object of making these things. It's also a key object of the space matter. But for just want to explain or talk about uh, the mythological aspect of this creation. And just before you start, the reason we chose this work at the end was after seeing the history of women, the stories of women and going through war, we wanted to give a sense of freedom so that people, when they grow up, they get into this fresh arena and sex fetishism. So you see a lot of work that talks about the whole cleansing act, healing away and looking for a better future. So, what are your questions? One point here is the religious and cultural and natural countries in France, the countries of the Tunisian area. Look at this picture, you can see uh, the map, the big two bridge, it's very old, 3,000 years ago, related to an Assyrian tree. Uh, as you can see in this picture, it's suffering to you, 600 years ago in Iraq, and my boss is contemporary angel. I, I cleaned and painted two beads in cotton and carried them all over Iran and encouraged people to be an angel. Clay, people clay rolls and rolls to beads, people to beads, in front of beads and take a photo, many photos of them and select and choose the best of them and paint them with uh, and mix and combine the, all painting, all uh, calligraphy in Persia and other things in Persia together. And, uh, in fact, the uh, result is these pictures. And they are just quite strong. Sorry. The many pictures we could only select two or three to show, but the uh, Jaapur name of those pictures which are there. So, yeah. And of course, there's a larger body of work which we have shown. Thank you. Anything else? Can you want to add? Great, thank you. Let's all go up. Other two works are, can be seen at Mark Street News and at PGIR. It's a very simple idea. And, I mean, his passion is cycling, so you have all his three works will have a cycle in it. But it's a very simple idea, and if you want to elaborate, you can. When it came here, it was a blank canvas, and we wanted people to write their own history. So, you're free to come and be a part of this project. It makes new canvas. It fills up the colors on its own. So you become a part of the history of this exhibition through this. You want to add anything? I think it talks about the right thing like the tattoo colors here. For instance, the blue skin of the present and this way. But no matter what, how many can be drawn from the blue skin? The history is never black and white. I mean, that's in a nutshell what the painting was. The history is never black and white. It's always in, in mid tone, in the gray scale. And that's what it talks about. So, yeah, by the time this goes back to base, we take a tour and you feel free to come back and take color, spoil the floor. Anyways, we're going to be thrown out of it. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you, you, you better clean this. You better clean this. Yeah. Okay, Lela. Please.
goals it shows you your perception, your understanding of the content is different. You know, and likewise, I think history is full of personal choices, biases, prejudices, you know, um, you know, and it lies in the person who writes it. Mohammed well, was written by British Bank simply because uh, at that time there was a literary you know, But however, you know, religiously pious you are, there are certain So um, I did the flow of silverfish and I treated the table also with forks because um, I think this trip is So we, we were here uh, stuck for five years and had the opportunity, uh, five years, I'm sorry, five weeks, and had the opportunity to, to develop new works. Uh, this is uh, one of the three works. Uh, I don't know who, who is used of uh, copy books. Yeah. Here in Sri Lanka, they use it to learn uh, the Latin letters, yeah? so not single letters, Latin letters. Yeah? And uh, then, when you can uh, when you learn the letters, you can write sentences. Yeah? But this is not the main reason why we choose it. Yeah? This was uh, published in the 50s, as so the 1950s. It uh, shows a lot of the thinking from the UK in relationship to their uh, colonization or the colonized countries. Yeah? I will uh, explain. Uh, here is uh, India belongs to UK. So you have to imagine five or six year old children always rewriting India belongs to the UK. Or uh, idleness rusts the mind. Idleness rusts the mind. Then France, South of England. It's very classic for, for Europe. So. <laughs> Yeah, we tried it uh, so under, the, under the help of the audience to rewrite this whole history. So it still works. Uh, there are people. Uh, uh, so there's one high that trust the mind, and so so does Justin Bieber. Yeah? So a uh, good reply, I think, for the Western uh, Western uh, culture. Um, we have, uh, yeah, maybe uh, if you also uh, can. Uh, we write it also, so it uh, would help us a little bit there. Uh. Would you mind us talking also, just briefly, because there's two other uh, fascinating pieces of work. Yeah. Could you just talk about the very brief about the two pieces where they are? Okay, yeah, one of the works is that the Nietzsche IRR, AR, yeah, this is the small menu. Uh, there we have a video work. Uh, we, uh, we found a little interesting piece in Nicaragua, maybe it's all over the world, in Sri Lanka. There are switches to turn off uh, the street lights. Yeah? So every uh, every man, uh, every uh, person who is living in front of the uh, street lamp is responsible at night to switch it on and off. Yeah? And every body who is able to pass by is also able to switch on and off. Yeah? And we used uh, the city lights. Uh, to make a video, uh, maybe everybody uh, knows the Morse code, yeah? so on, off, on, off, uh, short and long, yeah? you can make a message with putting on and off the switch. Yeah? So we uh, produce a video with all 26 letters of the ABC, and yeah, this is for us it's more so when you are writing uh, or making history, uh, you need a system to save the words, uh, so it's more like a, a basis uh, for, for communication, yeah, so this we can see. And, uh, and maybe in other relations, Sri Lanka is, uh, when we arrived, there were a lot of uh, power shutdowns, so it's also the on and off of the light uh, 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 relation. And the uh, third work is uh, the LPI, it's more a landscape work. Uh, we worked with uh, the material of drinking straws. So for us, I think it's a very touristic material. The straws, uh, they are stick together and uh, producing a 3D model over the landscape. Yeah. So I think we have to, to see it. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I will move on to the next.
which is many journeys we all take during in our, in our uh, what do you call jet setting period. But what we do is the more we fly, the more we get further away, we, we all live in different cultures now. The heritage we have back from tends to keep changing and then a lot of it has been lost. So Reggie, why don't you uh, talk about either of these words? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. 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 Then we go down uh, this way. See, as I was saying, it's about the world of course about globalization, emigration, destruction, tradition, and intentional or otherwise uh, to globalization and development. And the actual process of making the work is as much about the work as anything else. So it's a very labor intensive work, it's a detailed drawing, taking from photographs that I've taken over in the other year, I think it's up in the Orchard Lenka, uh, and produce these drawings back in the studio. Um, obviously it's labor intensive, it takes five or six weeks every day working on it. And then I can describe it, that describing, that scarring on it, it's just as much about um, the, the changes that you've made in the society. And once you've made that mark, there's not a lot of stories that go back. Yeah, thank you. 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 And they're actually an actual flight line, so this is a car and it's uh, uh, not, I couldn't be exactly which point it would be Colombo, but it would be somewhere there. Um, and uh, the whole world's got a varnish on it. It's kind of technology that's very different to come from uh, learning with photography. So it's sort of lines of trip and all the moon boy, um, and they're with their token. So that gets the, the varnish to kind of give it that ground together. So a lot of people do think it's a great thing. Um, this one's going to move on a little bit where there is this capturing of paint. And it's um, two things. One is the kind of haphazard society of, of Asian societies, as the West sees it as being kind of chaotic, kind of crazy, and colourful and bright. But there is an order, there is, there is an order to chaos, there is an intention. And with the way the process is working, putting that paint on is intentional. So I actually place the paint around to dry. I then take it off, you know, on a shower, and on one side, I've got to take photographs of where I want the clear pieces, and then put that on the and uh, just keep on giving a look at photographs and paint stuff, and we'll check that out. Uh, there's another piece of the post-structural institute of archaeology, which is a little bit more dark again, and has now the gold leaf with the main uh, instruction press, instruction press that are still the new building. The white lines here are actually scaffolding. Here. So the scaffolding of buildings are being built to the west side of the bend. Is there any questions? Yeah. Uh, um, in Paris, no, no more questions, right? Yeah. Okay, so we're going to go down. I'm going to rush this because we have, we have a panel discussion at five, and all the four panelists are here, so we need to get somewhere. So we go down the stairs, we turn left, there's two more artworks you see. One is by Puri Manjaya Singh, he was standing right here, and the one is by the creator Lee Butler. So, Lee, please lead the way. This, this, we are here in the second and we went before on this history. And I was thinking about that and I wanted to make something which drew attention to this second, this moment of history. But also I was very concerned with the relationship between the public and the artist to make his work. And I've always, in other discussions, I'm talking about work, I've always said, well, the artist makes, has a vision, the artist has a concept, they articulate the concept in a artifact of some form. And the public, that interpret it, and the actual interpretation to be is as much a part of making the work as, as the original conception of the actual make the other fact. So I wanted to kind of, in this one piece of work, work kind of reflect those concerns, that the idea of, of this moment, of being in this moment, of being here and now, and imagine and also where you come from, and also being able to talk about um, that, that whole process. So where are the public participate? And so it's very, very simple. The on tells the story, and the public are invited to write their name in full, in script, connecting to each other. So that in the course of the last few hours, maybe a hundred or so people have, have become part of the work, and we invite you 
after we've seen the other piece of work, because I'm sure if you haven't already contributed, I'd be delighted if you contribute to this piece of work by a right or later when you should be connected to the person before you. Okay. And can we now move on to the final piece of work? And towards the interactive process, you feel free to walk on these prints and become a part of the installation. So you feel yourself walking in somebody else's shoes uh, before you leave the show. So please go in, come in right here, should answer your questions. Thank you so much for your time. I know it was longer than we thought it would take. And we'll be downstairs at the reception for another 10 minutes before we leave. If you have any questions, it can be made forward. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.